on uh, YouTube, and we are ready to go in just a few seconds. Man, did you see that Shark Island Challenge lineup so far? Looking insane, bro. I wish Yeah. I could be there in person to watch it. It's going to be I know. pre pretty freaking epic. Yeah. Yep. All right. Hold on. It's still doing its thing. Before we get rolling, real quick, love the t shirt, bro. Oh, my gosh. This thing is freaking pretty good. Silent, both the shirt and Sasaki. Yeah, it actually printed out really good. I was really impressed on the on the quality. All right, I think we are good. I just want to make sure the YouTube side is uh, going. We're two minutes uh, over time. What? Update streaming URL, streaming key. Oh, man. Stand by. Let me do this real quick. Yeah, everything looks good. I'm just going to try one more time. Sorry, Jackson. Stand by. What? It says it's uh, streaming. Double check. Stand by. This is uh this is what happens when you don't have your own production crew. Live without a net. <laughs> exactly. What? It says it oh, okay, we are. We're good. All right. Let me find you now. Uh, all right, so we're good to go. We are solid. Let's rock. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 277 of Bug Life, pitted with action and Manny V. I'm coming to you from the heart of NASCAR Valley, Charlotte, North Carolina. Manny, where the heck you at? Well, I am currently in uh, Bocas del Toro in Panama. It's um, a set of islands just on the east coast of Panama in the Caribbean, or actually in the Atlantic, and it has been uh, pretty insane here. Um, I thought I'd join you on having our background be our um, headboard of our beds. <laughs> At least we're comfortable. Yeah, at the very least. I actually threw my back out a little bit. Oh, Um, man. a few days ago. So I am uh, nursing that hopefully day by day, it'll get better. But aside from that, at least I'm recovering in paradise. Not a bad place to recover. All right. Yeah. So let's get into shout outs first and foremost this week. Um, my shout out goes to my old friend, Todd Stavak. Now, uh, for every, all of us who bodyboard and or surf, you know, we have that crew from when we're Groms that, you know, really pushed us, you know, in the beginning. And uh, my boy Todd was one of those guys, you know, back in like 89, 90, when I was, you know, just learning. But, you know, was that a point where like I was taking to bodyboarding pretty quickly? Yeah, you know, just because I was so passionate and basically didn't give a damn about anything else at that point in my life. You know, <laughs> yeah. there was my boy Todd and my friend Ben, and the three of us were like a New Jersey beach rat Grom version of Kawhi Classic. We actually modeled ourselves after the Kawhi Classic. You know, we would... run simulate, simulated heats out in the water when during our free surf we really really pushed each other you know as a matter of fact the first amateur final i ever made it was because of those guys local contest end of the summer and all three of us made finals in that contest and a big part of it was because we were so aggro out in the water you know friendly competition And we were really good friends, but, you know, if you blew a wave, man, you heard about it. <laughs> Oh and, my gosh. and then, you know, on the days where the surf was flat during the summer, which is a frequent occurrence in New Jersey, you know, 
we jump on our bikes and ride to all the local surf shops and check out what bodyboard gear they had, you know, check out all the latest boards. And, you know, if a video had just come out, we would buy the video, cruise back to one of our houses, you know, raid the refrigerator and practically study bodyboard videos from the early Tom Boyle videos to the Kawhi Classic video itself, Future of Youth. Um, to the early rot videos, which also had a big influence on the music we listened to. And, you know, a lot, of, I'd be willing to say majority of the things that I have been able to experience in the last 36 years of being, you know, a bodyboarder is thanks to my boy Todd. So big birthday shout out to him. And thank you for letting me talk a little story on that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, well, happy birthday. And uh, for me, shout out is going to go to I probably has have given him a shout out in the past uh, 277 episodes. But uh, Adam Burton, he's been, uh, you know, one of those icons in the very beginning of Cabo Freak Fest. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And he uh, got the nickname Bladum. Uh, short for Black Adam, which is probably not politically correct nowadays, but uh, he's DC. okay with it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Adam Burton, thank you so much for keeping it positive and always, uh, you know, frothing on bodyboarding. He is now working in San Diego, so he will be. Uh, I will be seeing more of him. We actually uh, have a have a date to have a beer together, Coronado Brewing, and uh, I think it's Pizza Port combined forces and put out a an IPA under their brands called the El Rolo. And they have this nice. super, super awesome artwork on the can. And he picked up a few cases at Trader Joe's. So we're going to we're gonna meet up and uh, definitely want to check, grab a case for myself just to have because uh, – it's not often where these brands uh, actually, you know, give props to bodyboarding, let alone name a, a a beer after a bodyboarding maneuver. So definitely won't grab a six pack for myself. Nice. But uh, yeah, shout outs this week go to uh, Bladham, Adam Burton. Well, speaking of giving a nod to the sport of bodyboarding, let's get into bodyboarding news. For those of you who did not see it, Vert Magazine posted an article on their website as well as their social media. The ISA, the International Surfing Association, is looking into bringing back the World Bodyboard Championship. For those of you who don't recall the WBC, because the last time it ran was almost a decade ago in 2015, it was basically the Olympics for bodyboarding. And bodyboarding kind of took a back burner with the ISA so they could focus on getting surfing into the Olympics. But the ISA is the sanctioning body that made that happen. And now they're looking back, uh, looking forward to bringing back the World Bodyboard Championship. You know, international competition where you have individual divisions like you know men's women's uh junior men's junior girls drop knee but there's also team competition and uh you know this could very well be that doorway that a lot of bodyboarders have been clamoring for to get bodyboarding into the olympics Hope potentially uh, you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this opens the potential to try and get bodyboarding into the Summer Olympics for Los Angeles in 2028. Wow, that would be amazing. And I mean, the ISA, they know what it takes to get a sport in the Olympics. So to have them bring bodyboarding back on board and have the potential of showing up in the Olympics Jeez, that would be freaking incredible. Uh, definitely will put a, a fire under the American bodyboarding community's asses to step up and, you know, put something 
little bit more organized as far as competitions in the works. Yes, I mean, if the WBC does get brought back, um, all eyes here in the U.S. are going to be on the surfing organizations that are responsible for sanctioning Team USA. Yeah, that's going to be pretty awesome. So keep us posted on what you hear on that on that front. Yeah. Now, you know, just a little aside with this piece of news, you and I have both worked as commentators for the World Bodyboard Championship. I, I thought it was a phenomenal event. You know, I was fortunate enough to work commentary in 2014, 2015, the last two years that it ran in Iquique, Chile, and just the vibe for the whole thing was mind-blowing. I mean, not just, you know, the individual riders pushing to win their divisions, but just the overwhelming sense of national pride for each country that was in attendance. Uh, 2014, when we worked together at the event, I remember, you know, there were a single rider representing Italy. You know, there were two riders representing Mexico. And they were proud to be there, waving their national flag high and doing their best to represent their home country. And I swear to God, if we have a Team USA there, which, you know, I was kind of touching on both years I worked as a commentator, you know, I, I can't even express how stoked I'd be. You know, one, to have the World Bodyboard Championship back, but two, to have Team USA represented for the first time in, I can't even remember the last time that uh, the U.S. was involved in the ISA games or the WBC. I will say this, a little piece of bodyboarding trivia. The only mainland bodyboarding world champion came to us via the ISA Games in Puerto Rico, 1988. Thank you, Chris Cunningham. Yes, sir. Huntington Beach's very own Chris Cunningham. Um, I think uh, I think I touched base with him last time I was in Huntington Beach, and he would he would be great to have on Bug Life for that reason and many other reasons. Uh, so yeah, we need to we need to track him down. Most definitely. Well, yeah. So, if, so that's if, my that's my big piece of news. <laughs> I'm gonna the ISA headquarters is actually right down the hill from where I live. I think I'm gonna go knock on their door and just uh, make sure that our names are written down somewhere on their bodyboarding uh, paperwork. So if that does come to fruition, we are. Uh, I would love to sit next to you again and uh, commentate the the games. One hundred percent, brother. You know, I would I would love to be able to be a part of the event. And even though we're in the commentary booth, I would be glad to represent the United States, no matter where the games end up being held. Oh my gosh, that sounds pretty epic. I'm I'm right there with you. So when I get back into town in San Diego, um, yeah, definitely we'll we'll walk down the street. All right. Sounds good, brother. And then now right. rolling to you, you've got a bunch of stuff to update us on. So let's get into it, brother. Well, first off, uh, we'll just uh, I'll name the winners of the Bocas Invitational. The last time we were went live with Pitted, uh, it was awesome to get uh, Ruben Viegas, one of the organizers of the event, to come on live. And he was super stoked to mentioned not only bringing the event back next year but also possibly tagging on a another event on the west coast of panama uh where they would go back to back uh santa catalina and playa bluff would be those locations more on that uh as we uh as i hear more and talk with those guys uh ruben and gustavo but uh the winners uh plc won the men's event uh, Jericho uh, uh, from uh, the Galapagos Islands won the drop knee event. Paola Samal won the women's di uh, division. And in the juniors, it was Beatable Mania. Yancy Michael from Peru, who has been blowing minds here, 
who had a chance to possibly be, do a double dip in winning the Open and the Juniors, but unfortunately things did not turn out the way uh, he would have liked. But either way, Peter Mania is in full force. Boca's Invitational 2025 is definitely going to be uh, a, another great event. As we're talking about contests, I've been looking at uh, my social media feed and seeing some of the names that are confirmed for the 2024 Shark Island Challenge. Holy shit. The list is incredible. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to pull that up on my phone just so we know what we are uh, going to be in a treat for. The problem is the the wave where they're having it, which is Shark Island, is pretty fickle. But when it's on, it is on, and it's the one of the one of the heaviest right hand slabs. The when body Shark body. Island fires, it's legendary. Yeah, yeah. But some of the names that are popping uh, popping off in the uh, I'm looking it up right now under shark island challenge and i there it is pulled it up oh i thought i was following him all right so just to name a few uh marley dunn he's just one of the latest confirmed harley ward it gets uh gets more interesting dave winchester winning oh <laughs> yeah yes sean pine um plc we have, and he's coming off a win, Lily Pollard. That is going to blow minds. I think um, I think she... Dude, and Lily it, charges the island. I can't wait to see her compete against the guys. Yeah, and I'm just looking at Lily's post uh, of the Shark Island Challenge. Jason Finlay commented, hell yeah, Lily, let's, let's go get into some bombs. So that's the kind of vibe that this event brings together. It's not, I'm going to take you out in round one. It's more like, let's go do this, which is freaking amazing. Uh, Jack Baker, he's a he's a nutcase. Uh, Michael Osler, another legend. Andrew Lester, the list goes on. I mean, St uh, Steph Kukorilis. I mean, I want to see this uh, Portuguese guy. Uh, throw it down. And yes, we'll finish off Jace Finlay and this guy right here, Jacob Romero. So he is pumped. And yeah, the list goes on. Louis Finnegan, Tanner McDaniel. It's one of those events where if you get the invite, uh, you cannot say no. You go. Yeah, I, I'd love to see some more of the previous winners. You know, I'd love to see Ben Player come out you know, Kingy, you know, guys who have won at Shark Island before, former world champions, you know, let, let's start knocking on their door and, get, you know, deliver them an invite because, dude, this is, like you said, if Shark Island shows up and delivers in true Shark Island fashion, this is going to be something to remember. But also, you yeah. have to you have to keep in mind, um, like you said, Shark Island is a fickle wave. There was actually one year it was part of the IBA World Tour back in the early two thousands, and they ran out of contest window and waves, and they got they only got as far as the quarterfinals, and they basically ended up agreeing to split the prize purse amongst the final 16 and there was no winner that year it's only happened once in all of the years that the shark island shark island challenges one has been run but you know you have to keep that in the back of your head you know you you might get skunked but chances are sometime during that window shark island's gonna bear its teeth yeah, I mean, their contest window, I'm just pulling up the, the webpage. It's sharkislandchallenge.com. But their window is going to be running from May 24th to June 30th. So they got over a month of, um, you know, the contest window to run the event. And, of course, just like you said, they're going to wait for the best prime time uh, to make it happen. And, yeah, it's going to be a very exciting 
event to watch. I'm not sure about the details of their if they're going to be live streaming or if it's strictly just uh, you know posts on their Instagram. I don't know, but we'll get more details on that. And I think you and I should uh, definitely get something together as far as uh, commenting on the the waves, the riders, and everything once the event does show up. And before we step into the next piece of the news, one last aside for the Shark Island Challenge. I've said it countless times in the past. I'm sticking to it now. One of the greatest, heaviest bodyboarding competitions ever, the 2001 Shark Island Challenge. What's stuck right out up, here? Right up yeah, there with the 94 pipe contest. You know, and some of the heaviest action you've ever seen at Eureka, Fronton, 2001 Shark Island Challenge, right up there with the greatest. All right, we're going to have to pull up a video clip on uh, on our next pitted. But let's, uh, let's keep rolling. I tell you what, next week for episode 278, we'll pull up that old gem for the video of the week. Perfect. Or we'll do that. All right. Next up is um, I, I just wanted to get your take on this. Um, the organizers, not necessarily the IBC, but the organizers of the Anafagasta Bodyboard Festival uh, reached out to me to come down and uh, commentate. Um, I haven't replied to them yet. Uh, just, you know what? Let's we'll, we'll talk about it on our, our private chat and then we'll talk about it next week. But uh I'd love I'll to tell you. Here. I'll tell you straight up. Go for it, dude. I loved working that event. If you've got a chance to go back to Anapagasta, don't hesitate. Jump on it. All right. So we don't have to talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll chat later about that, though. I still want to uh, pick your brain. Uh, next on my list. Um, the new images for the t-shirts is coming up in the next few days. So uh, expect that to drop and book life patrons, uh, members and free members. They're going to be the first ones to get that information once it's all uploaded and ready to go. And last but not least, uh, Jacob Romero is going to be joining us in Cabo. So if you're bodyboarding, if, you're, if you want to bodyboard warm barrels and uh, get photos and video and drone of every session, Cabo, uh, we used to call it Cabo Exploration, but everybody knows it as Cabo Freak Fest. The freaky part of it has has gone its way, but it's just the name, and you know we're all about just finding waves the whole week. So oh, what, Jacob, no milk chug? <laughs> no, no milk chug contest, no taco eating contest, no belly flop contest, and definitely no century club. So those days are are long gone. Now it's oh, all about... 20 years ago, the debauchery was real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Jake Romero in um, in Cabo this year, August. So uh, I'm getting some some messages from Black Ad or Bladum. Um, <laughs> Sean Virtue. Sean Virtue, uh, question mark. Where is Sean Virtue? That would be uh, another name that would be pretty awesome to have. Yeah, for those of you not familiar with Australian Sean Virtue, the guy was an aerial master. I mean, he would be boosting at massive chopu. And always loved watching video footage of Virtue and seeing photos of him in the mags back in the day. I, I All right, let's throw out a couple other names. I think Guilherme Tamega was confirmed, too. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, GT is the only three-time winner. He did it consecutively in 2002, 2003, and 2004. He would be a heavyweight hitter if he's brought in for this event. Yeah. Damian uh, King is the name I'd like to see there. Kingy, yeah. And you know what? Where the hell is Nugget? I think they do have uh, four wild cards, not wild card, but four locals that are already in, and I'm guaranteed and he's one of them. I want to see Nugget, and where's Wingnut? I want to see Wingnut, Adam Smith. I think he might be another one of those locals, but uh, well, hopefully, if Wingnut um, 
shows up and is sober, he may have a very positive, uh, strong chance of winning this thing. Um, not like the time where he stayed with you in uh, Rio de Janeiro. That was Nugget, not Wing Nut. <laughs> yes, Nugget. Oh, yeah, Nugget. I stand corrected. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that visit was an adventure. I love uh, I love Nugget to death, but uh, me and him going to see Christ the Redeemer in Rio, having a a handful of beers each, and going back to the apartment, a little uh, buzzed, shall we say, did not make my ex wife happy whatsoever. Wasn't he running around your uh, apartment building with everybody there naked? I don't know about that, but. Uh, yeah, you know, there was a little overnight MIA action going on. <laughs> uh, lost luggage and wallets, and uh, it, it was an adventure. But, you know, I wouldn't expect anything less from Nugget, and uh, I was stoked to cruise with him. All right, so uh, a couple names you would like to see, a couple more names. Oh, I'd love to see Mike Stewart give it a go. Mike's only a couple of months away from his 61st birthday. As we saw a few weeks back, Mike's still charging pipeline. You know, he's still the master. He's a former Shark Island Challenge champion. I'd love to see him in the mix. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what about some of the young guns? Uh, some of the younger guys? Oh, man, I would love to see Tristan Roberts there. And uh, the French riders have been on a tear uh, the most prevalent, of course, being Ethan Captaville. I'd love to see uh, see it, the next generation of Captaville at Shark Island. That would be intense. So we got Lily Pollard. She's the only female right now that has been confirmed. Who else do you think could uh, could handle the the strength of Shark Island? Well, we just touched on next gen guys, next generation women's future world champion, in my opinion, already has a pro junior world title, Luna Hardman. I mean, yeah, I mean, that was the first, one of the first names. Actually, her, her mom, named Mara, and her, if they got an invite together, would be amazing. Yeah, we're, we're seeing those two accomplish mother-daughter duo things in the in competitive bodyboarding that our sport has never seen before. You know, you've got a five time women's world champion in Neymara. You've got the junior women's world champion from a year ago in Luna. Luna's already in the mix uh, right off the bat for a women's world title this year. And uh, you know, Luna's not only had the tutelage of her five time world champ mom, but she's also riding for six-time world champ Guillermo Tomega. So it's a, if if you got GT and Luna there, you'd have to watch out for Team GT. Yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting who else they have invited and confirmed. So we'll keep you guys posted on that for sure. All right. All right, I'm getting with the bodyboarding news on my end. All right, and since we're doing this on the fly, don't really have – a video of the week this week but um you can always hit up the usual sites breaking even tv we bodyboard there's never any shortage of video clips to check out and uh i i don't even have a motivational quote for this week. <laughs> I think just staying up late night to be able to pull this off is motivation enough. So, you know, I'll uh, be honest. It was a very busy day. I spent the day helping take care of my mom. She had a doctor's appointment. So we were there for several hours. And, you know, and I guess the best thing I can say is look out for those around you, whether it's friends and family on land during, you know, the daily routine of life or your crew out in the water just watch out for those close to you take care of one another i'll leave it at that. that yeah sounds perfect
Manny, great to see you. I miss you, brother. I'm glad you're still down in Panama enjoying paradise. And uh, for all of you watching, we'll see you next week with episode 278. Until then, we're out. Yep.